Are you trying to build a Shopify app, but you are confused by the documentation and outdated information? No worries. By the end of this video, you know exactly how to create your Shopify app. Welcome to Web3 Made, where we build the future together through Web3 technologies in e-commerce. My name is Keem, and let's get started. Shopify is the leading e-commerce site due to its customizability through payment gateways, plugins, and its overall aesthetics that enable the store owners or merchants as they're called to create stores, customize them and sell their products and services. Shopify enables developers to build applications or apps that merchants can then install to enhance the user experience. These apps provide some sort of utility to a store such as uh, advertisements, loyalty programs, and search engine optimization, or SEO for short. Now, there's two types of apps. There's embedded apps, which are, as they sound, embedded into what's called the Shopify admin area. Now, this admin area is where the merchants can view their store's activity, how many products they've sold, etc., and manage the store from there. And the second one is the standalone app. Now that exists outside of the Shopify admin store, um, sorry, area. And that is not what we will be focusing on this tutorial. This tutorial will be focused on the embedded apps. Shopify provides what's called app templates. These app templates speed up development process by providing pre-built code. So you don't have to write all the authorization um, for the backend. Now, in this video, we'll be focusing on the Node.js template. However, there are templates for uh, PHP and Ruby as well. Just a quick disclaimer, uh, Shopify is always updating their processes. So here are some breaking changes that you need to know. Now, apps that were made before the 23rd of August, 2022, must update their OAuth flow. And Shopify has introduced uh, the new Shopify command line interface or CLI version three back in June of 2022. And this CLI is basically designed to speed up the process even more, going from 13 commands to five to set up your application. Before you create your Shopify app, there are some prerequisites that you must have before starting. The first one is to make sure you have a partner account set up. And after that, have created a development store now, links to these are included down in the description um, for how to do that. Next is make sure you have an Ngrok account. Ngrok is a hosting service that enables your local development server to be accessed anywhere and update in real time. And for this tutorial, I highly suggest creating an account if you haven't done so. Again, it's in the description below. Third is make sure you know how to use the command line. On Windows, it's called the command prompt, and on Mac OS, it's called the terminal. Make sure to have Node installed up to at least version 14.17 or higher. You can download it for your operating system uh, in the link below. Then make sure to have a Node.js package manager. For this tutorial, we'll be using NPM uh, which will be installed along with Node in the same link. Alternatively, you can install it globally via the command line using npm install dash g npm. Now, Git is a version control system, meaning it tracks and records changes to your code. Make sure you have Git installed up to version 2.28 or higher. You can download it in the link below. And finally, make sure you're using the latest version of Google Chrome or Firefox. <sighs> now let's get started. If you are on Windows, press the Windows key and type CMD for the command prompt. I will switch to the D drive since I have more space on this disk. Feel free to, to do the same. Now, from here, choose a folder of your choice for where the app will be created. I'm going to stay right here and simply run this command. Uh, 
Now this command will install the template and the Shopify CLI all in one go. Here we are prompted to give the application its name. I'm going to stick with the placeholder. So just press enter and we will use the node template. Press enter again. Now it's going to download the actual template from the GitHub repository. Whilst the template is downloading, feel free to check out the Shopify CLI commands to get familiar with how it works. Depending on your internet speed and specification, your download should take about three to five minutes. Once you see the success message, you can now access your app template in the code editor of your choice. For this tutorial, we will be using VS Code. Now let's head over to VS Code. Open VS Code and select the newly created app template folder we just created. Say so yes, I trust the authors. Okay, here you will see a bunch of folders and files for the template. I will go through what each one means briefly so you understand what they mean. I will outline what each main folder and file does. So the VS Code folder provides uh, recommended extensions for VS Code. This is called Polaris for VS Code. Now Polaris is Shopify's design system that follows their best practices for quote, admin experiences. Node modules is all of the dependencies and peer dependencies required for this app template to run. So if you head over to the package.json, you'll see dependencies, app and CLI here. And these are dependent on all of these modules working together. The web folder is the actual app itself. So let's start with the front end, which is what you'll be seeing. Now, the assets folder contains the images. The components folder contains placeholder components that you're gonna see at the end of this tutorial. Now, the hooks folder contains um, React hooks, which is reusable code to perform frequently performed actions. For example, the use authenticated fetch hook is essential for making API calls from the front end to your server. The pages folder contains the actual pages and layout for each page. Here's a git ignore file for ignoring files that you don't want to be um, tracked by git. App.jsx contains the providers for the application. So the Polaris provider, the design system, uh, the browser router for the routing and the app bridge provider for communication between the app and the Shopify admin area. Index.html for hosting the actual UI and then index.jsx contains the root of the application where the app.jsx is hosted on. The routes.jsx contains what's called file-based routing. You don't have to use it, but it's there. And then it is more config files that you can choose to change. And then outside of the web folder is just some backend server code. And then here we have the Docker file for instructions for the Docker image that will produce the consistent environments and more ignore files, configuration files, readmes and package JSONs. This next step will require you to have your ngrok account and authorization token already prepared. So inside of your project folder, press control apostrophe on Windows to open the terminal. Then run the command npm run dev. This will start a local development server. Now, once you see this message here, you're going to be prompted to log into your Shopify partners account and just press any key to get to the login screen. Okay, log in. Then it will say this message, you've successfully logged in to the CLI. Now we can go back. Now the CLI will ask you some questions to set up the app in your partner dashboard. So the first one will say, um, it's a new project on Shopify. Say yes, create it as a new app, press enter. 
Uh, the app name will be the app name of the folder. Sorry, the name of the folder. So I press enter. Okay. And then see here for me, it says default dev store C3 Mintify test. So you need to make sure you already have a development store set up as this is my development store. Otherwise this won't work. And as you can see, I have the ngrok URL, well, the ngrok URL right here to access the application. And it's been successfully hosted. However, we still need to install the application into the store itself. Right now it's, it's installed to our uh, partner's dashboard, not the actual store. If you head over to your partner's account and select all apps, you can see the number of installs for your app. So far we have zero installs. So let's head back over to VS Code and click on the shareable URL here. Open. Now we can install the application onto the development store. Once installed, you will finally be able to see the app itself. As I mentioned earlier, it contains pre-built components, pages and images. This final step is optional and involves publishing products to your development store for testing. From the app's homepage, click on populate five products to add products to your development store. Now I've already done this, so it says total products five. Once you've done this, click on products on this side navigation menu here and select however many products you want to publish. I will select the top three and then click on more actions and then add available channel. Okay, products made available. This will automatically pick the development store and make them available. So now these products are published on your store. So that means you can begin to interact with them through your application. Great, now you know how to create a Shopify app following the latest guidelines from Shopify, including the CLI version three and the new OAuth flow. If you successfully created your Shopify app, please post mission complete in the comments below. If unsuccessful, say what happened and I'll help you as soon as possible. My name's Keem and my goal is to build the future together through Web3 technologies in e-commerce. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.